looking for mother certificates? Yes. Come here and sit down. Yes. Um, I would love to have a math researcher, but first, uh, you need to prove yourself. So you have to solve this and give me your output. So in this first graph, the y equals x squared, this is parabola opening upwards with a vertex at 0, 0, and symmetrical about the y-axis, while graph y equals negative x squared, this is a parabola opening downwards, vertex at 0, 0, and also symmetrical about the y-axis. And in set B, y equals x, and y equals negative x, so y equals x, this is a straight line passing through the region with a slope 1, while the y equals negative x is a straight line passing through the region with a slope of negative 1. And in set C, the y equals x cubed and y equals negative x cubed. So the y equals x cubed, this is a cubic curve passing through the region and it has a point of inflection at the region. And in graph of y equals negative x cubed, this is a cubic curve passing through the region and it has a point of inflection at the region. And it also symmetrical about the region but reflected across the x-axis. In summary, the graphs of y equals x to the power of n and y equals negative x to the power of n are related by reflection across the x-axis. For even n, the graphs exhibit symmetry about the y-axis, whereas for odd n, the graphs exhibit symmetry about the region. This pattern holds for all integer values of n, providing a general rule for the symmetry and reflection properties of these polynomial functions. Now let's proceed to the other graphing of functions. For the set A, the equations y equals x, y equals 2x, y equals 3x, and y equals 4x. These functions are passing through the region, and y equals x has aligned the slope of 1, 2x slope of 2, 3x slope of 3, and 4x with the slope of 4. And for the set B, the equations y equals x, y equals 1 half x, y equals 1 third of x, and y equals 1 fourth of x can be plotted as y equals x is aligned with slope of 1, so 1 half of x is aligned with the slope of 1 half, 1 third x is aligned with the slope of 1 third, 1 fourth x is aligned with the slope of 1 fourth. And all of this passing through the region. Using this GeoGebra graphing software, you can observe that the for set A, as the slope increases from 1 to 4, the lines become steeper. For set B, as the slope decreases from 1 to 1 fourth, the lines become less steep. So, based on the graphs of these functions, we can formulate the following conjectures. For lines of the form y equals k of x, where k is a constant, if k is greater than 1, the line becomes steeper as k increases. If 0 is less than 2k and k is less than 2, 1, the line becomes less steep as k decreases. Therefore, the steepness of the line is directly proportional to the value of k. Furthermore, all lines in both sets pass through the region of 0, 0. This is a characteristic of lines with the form of y equals k of x. So the function y equals k of x represents a family of linear functions where k is a slope. The slope k determines the angle the line makes with the x-axis. Larger k means a steeper angle, smaller k but positive means a shallower angle. So these conjectures and generalizations can help in understanding how the slope k affects the graph of a linear function. Now let's graph another set of linear functions. So the set a we have here y equals x, y equals x plus 2, y equals x plus 5, and y equals x plus 7. The equations represent straight lines with the same slope, 1, but different y-intercepts. So the y equals x passes through the region of 0, 0, and y equals x plus 2 has y-intercept at 2, y equals x plus 5 has y-intercept at 5, and last, it has y-intercept at 7. So in set B, y equals x, y equals x minus 2, y equals x minus 5, and y equals x minus 7. Similarly, these are also straight lines with the same slope, 1, but different y-intercepts. So in x minus 2, it has y-intercepts at negative 2, x minus 5 has y-intercepts at negative 5, x minus 7 has y-intercepts at 7. So to visualize this, let's graph these lines. So in graph of set A, all lines are parallel to each other because they all have the same slope, which is 1. They are vertically shifted versions of y equals x. 
the lines are equidistant from each other with the vertical distance between adjacent lines being equal to the difference in their y-intercepts. And in graph of set B, similarly, all lines are parallel to each other with the same slope of 1. These are also vertically shifted versions of y equals x, but they are shifted downwards. The vertical distance between adjacent lines is again equal to the difference in their y-intercepts. So by graphing these sets of lines, you can observe that changing the y-intercept of a linear function results in vertical shifts on the graph without affecting its slope or direction. This property is fundamental in understanding how linear functions behave under transformations. And now let's proceed to quadratic functions. So let's have the set A, which is y equals x squared, y equals one-half x squared, y equals one-fourth x squared. These functions are all the form of a x squared, where the coefficient a affects the width of the parabola. So as a decreases from 1 to 1 half to 1 fourth, the parabola becomes wider, in general for y equals a x squared. So if a is greater than 0 and less than 1, the parabola is wider than y equals x squared. And if a equals 1, the parabola is a standard parabola. If a is greater than 1, the parabola becomes narrower. So now let's proceed to the set B, where y equals x squared, y equals 2x squared, and y equals 4x squared. So these functions are also of the form of y equals ax squared, but with a values greater than 1. As a increases from 1 to 2 to 4, the parabola becomes narrower, in general for y equals ax squared. So if a is greater than 1, the parabola becomes narrower. If 0 is less than to a and a is less than to 1, the parabola becomes wider. If a equals to 1, the parabola is a standard parabola. So now we have the set C, y equals x squared, y equals x squared plus 1, and y equals x squared plus 2. So these functions are of the form of y equals x squared plus k, where the constant k affects the vertical translation of the parabola. So if k is greater than 0, the parabola shifts upward by k units. And if k is less than 0, the parabola shifts downward by absolute k units. If k is equal to 0, the parabola remains unchanged vertically. And now to this last set, set d. These functions are also of the form y equals x squared plus k, but with negative k values. As k decreases from 0 to negative 1 to negative 2, the entire parabola shifts downward by absolute k units. So if k is less than 0, the parabola shifts downward by absolute k units. If k is greater than 0, the parabola shifts upward by k units. And if k equals to 0, again, the parabola remains unchanged vertically. So in summary, coefficient a in y equals a x, x squared. If a is greater than 0 and less than 1, the parabola becomes wider. And if a equals 1, this is standard parabola. And if a is greater than 1, the parabola becomes narrower. So in vertical translation with constant k in y equals x squared plus k, k is greater than 0, parabola shifts upward by k units. And if k is less than 0, parabola shifts downward by absolute k units. And k equals 0, standard position of the parabola. And these generalizations hold constant, consistently for quadratic functions. That's it for our observation. Okay, so congratulations. Um, I will now accept you as my math researcher. Mm -hmm.